jump to uh, the actual interview. So they will ask you the purpose of the visit. Why do you want to go to the United States? Also, what is the reason of your visit? That's the same question. Why are you coming here? So when they ask you this question, you have to put in mind that you already completed your DS-160 before you showed up for the interview. And those people already looked at it. They looked at the DS-160 already. So in your DS-160, if you put that your purpose of visit is to come, you know, visit family or you come for a conference or you're coming uh, for a vacation, you already put that there and they already read it or they already know the answer what you said they know you're going to visit family but then you show up and they ask you what is the purpose of visit so when they ask you this what does that mean it means they want more information on what you provided so i'm coming to visit my daughter right but then what are you going to do that's the question right okay now when they ask you the reason of visit you'll say either my daughter had a child and i want to go meet my grandkid so that's a reason for visit so they know that other than you just visiting family that you already provided in the ds160 the reason for visit is actually to meet your grandkid or if you re you put something about you know you're going to a conference right when you show up and they're like, what's the reason of visit? Then you provide more information about this conference. Like if it's a work or um, you're coming here for work, you're like, you know, oh, I work for this company. And then they decided you're going to do uh, this thing in the United States and it's going to last for this amount of time. So you're providing the details or, okay, I'm going to visit my son, but then my son was going to this university and then for four years he was studying like engineering or studying whatever he was studying and now he is graduating i'm going to attend the graduation or another thing you can be coming to you know attend a seminar for a church so you'll be like you know i go to this church they're having a seminar about whatever is going to be taking place in this place and then it's going to be taking it's going to take this amount of time or the duration is going to be a week two weeks and then that's the reason why I'm going to the United States. So other than just saying you're coming for a seminar, you're providing details, you're going to this seminar, the place where you're going, the church, and then the duration of whatever you're coming to do. So the reason of visit, when they ask you, why are you going there? They're not looking for something that you already provided in the DS-160. That's not what they want. What they want is like, yes we know you're going to visit your family but then what are you going to do right what are you going to be doing there because another thing maybe you're not even coming to see family you can come here like if you're going on vacation people are loaded people have money right they want to go for vacation in the united states and then when they're coming here they don't know anybody in the united states other than where they're going so maybe they booked you know a vacation in disney world they booked a vacation in niagara falls they booked a vacation whatever they booked a vacation at so when they ask you what's the reason of visit it's not like oh i'm going on vacation no i am going to niagara falls because you know i want to see i've had good things about it and then i want to take my family and we'll be going my wife me and my kids and we'll be going there and we'll be staying for two weeks at this hotel for this amount of time and then after the visit we'll come back or for example if you're coming for like you know uh, medical reasons you'd be like you know what i'm going to the united states because uh i have a family member who is sick and then the, he, she's gonna be or he's gonna be a part of a research or uh, something a trial clinical trial that is not available anywhere else only in the united states so we'll be going there and we'll be going you know if you have you know documents to prove that so we'll be this place this hospital in this state and we'll be there for a certain amount of time or if you're not sure you're like you know we don't know how much the clinical trial trial is gonna last but we are going there for that because healthcare in america is expensive so if you're in africa then you're saying you're bringing your family member here to you know to 
get treatment but then again if you're coming here for medical reasons you have to be like you know there's a lot of people like i know who are denied uh to come here for medical reasons and it just makes sense because healthcare in america is very expensive like literally you can go get lab work done they just do like you know a bmp and something like that a cvc over there they'd be like that's a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars that they build your insurance in africa the same tests will be like a hundred dollars so if you're coming here for treatment and it's two that it costs two thousand here at a hundred dollars in africa how are you going to prove that you just want to pay a lot of money so you have to prove that whatever treatment you're seeking here is not available in a country where you are at or in another country that's cheaper than here because here treatment is very expensive so if you're just coming for dialysis like it's very expensive here compared to africa so the purpose of visit when you're answering a question about the purpose of visit you have to be ready for the follow-up question because if you're coming here you're like you know i want to go there because i want uh, you know like if you're medical treatment i want to get dialysis there they will ask you the follow-up question will be like you're going to america it costs way too much why don't you get dialysis done in africa why don't you get it done in another country that's cheaper so there'll be follow-up questions and if you're coming to visit like you know i'm going to visit my friend it won't just end there oh my friend is having a graduation uh, and you know they invited me for uh, for that or they're having a wedding and then they invited me for that it won't end there usually there's a follow-up question how do you know this friend how did you meet them any relationship with them because they're trying to establish immigrant intent if you're a woman you're coming to see a man raising flags because they're like what if he's the boyfriend when did you meet what relationships do you have so that you should put in mind like whatever you say like if it's you're coming to see a friend there'll be follow-up questions about more information they want to know okay you want to visit your brother okay and then how long do you intend to stay there what kind of jobs do you do back home because if you don't have a job in africa and then you're going to see your brother in america raising flags because they'll be like oh maybe it's an immigrant intent if you don't have a job in africa your brother in america is doing very well what will make you come back so you have to put those things in mind so that you prepare for the interview and then when they ask you the like follow-up questions like i said just put in mind the immigrant intent and the unauthorized work that's what they are trying to establish so uh, if they ask you like you know you're coming to see uh like you're coming to see your grandchild and you know your daughter doesn't have any help you know that means like you'll be watching the baby if you watch the baby that's unauthorized work as much as you're not getting paid so you have to understand stuff like that and some people like usually i've noticed like if family like you know you have a relative here like if maybe uh you have like a son a daughter who has a good job you know and then uh you're a parent you want to come to to visit and see the grandkid even if you say like sometimes um you're coming to watch the baby then let it slide because you know they know either you'll come on a visitor's visa or you'll come on a green card so you will come anyways right so sometimes with like parents of like you know uh, u.s citizens they're not as strict as if they were for other people because you know like if they have good jobs even if you decide to stay family will take care of you so you're all set so usually as much as you're coming and then um for the reason of visit just be ready or prepared that whatever you're gonna say they will need more information and how do you go around it so when you're preparing you know that okay i'm gonna say this is my friend that i met you know we're not in a relationship or whatever and then they're having you know a wedding i'm just gonna go there because you know they were in kenya we established good relationship they visited me here and now i'm gonna visit there for like a month and then i come back and then you have proof that shows you'll come back either you have a job or you have stuff going on over there hey so this brings us to the next thing that is about the financial who's paying for your trip so who's paying for your trip are you financing uh the trip for yourself and if you're financing for the trip for yourself what do you do do you work do you have enough finances where do you have so the proof of funds if you're financing for your whole trip if it's a company 
does financing for your whole trip you'll have to like you know prove that if it's your relative in the u.s that is financing for the trip you will need proof that you know what as much as they're financing for example you get on a flight you land in the united states and they go mteja they don't pick up your phone how are you going back home you know do you have like even money for like a one night in a hotel that's what you need to prove when it comes to finances so as much as somebody else might be responsible for your uh, trip like all the financial aspects they also want to know that you can also carry your own like if you're here and they go mteja on you they disappear on you you're not gonna end up on the street homeless so they want to have like either proof of like okay you can carry your own like you can take care of yourself and how you can do that like uh, what i did like if you have somebody who's coming here and they don't have proof of the finances what i did for me which worked for me i have them go to the embassy and they go with somebody who has proof of finances so they apply like you, you know you have to invite like two people either invite your parent and then invite somebody else who has proof of finances so invite one person this one doesn't have proof of finances but then you have somebody else who's loaded and rich and they can go to the embassy together so when they go they're like you know we are traveling together so this one is poor but then this one has the finances to actually you know fund my trip to the united states so that like for people who like you know you have somebody you want to invite and then they don't have proof of finances another way to go about it is to invite them with somebody who has proof of finances so if they get here and they get stuck this person that they traveled with they don't have to travel with them at the same time because in my most cases the two people i invited they ended up coming and then they didn't even come with the person that I, I invited them with there's one person who's my cousin probably he's gonna be watching this i invited him he got a five-year visa he never showed up so actually not everybody wants to come to the u.s some people like you know they're doing very well in africa if you're doing very well in africa why come here and then just start over and then all this stress and all that stuff because it gets time it takes time to actually get um to where you want to be it takes time and sometimes people take long to get there so if your life is going on well you have funds finances you're loaded in africa there's no point of actually coming here but that's what that's what happened with my cousin i'm like you need to come see me you need to come visit you need to come see this no i convinced him got him a visa and he never showed up so we'll try again and see if he wants to come visit me again because the last time i was in kenya i went and visited him but then i told him to come here he got a visa and dude never showed up so i hope he's watching this and he will come visit but i understand you know he has a job and all that he has businesses that he runs over there so if he comes over here actually you know somebody running a business is an issue so usually in situations like that you can have a visa but then you can't go because if you go then your businesses are suffering and stuff like that so it's understandable but then when you invite two people it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that they have to travel together you just use that so that they know like these people are traveling together so uh, in case one doesn't have finances the other one will foot the bill even if that's not gonna that's not what will happen another question they will ask you how long do you plan on staying there in my, for my advice from my experience try to put the time as short as possible like say a month say two months and then i'll be back say six weeks and i'll be back or two months don't go like six months or eight months or whatever they're like this person is not somebody who has something to do back home when you prolong the time they think like your chances of immigrant intent are higher because you don't have anything to go back home to but then if you're like you know what my brother is in the united states i'm going to visit him for christmas but then I take care of my sick father in Africa that I have to come back to because he needs my care. So it shows as much as you're going, the chances of you going back to Africa are very high because you have business to take care of. You have to take care of your father. So that you have to show that you'll go back. So just the time when they ask you how long you plan on being there, don't be like, you know, three days. It doesn't make sense. Just be like, you know what? 
I want to go there for like a week or go there for, you know, the conference is going to take a week or two weeks or maybe um, the seminar will take a month or um, I'm going to visit, I'm going to attend graduation and stay with my son for like, you know, uh, two weeks and then I'm going to come back. So really when they ask you how long are you going to stay there, immigrant intent, they want to know if really you can stay out of the country for a very long time without giving a damn about it. So they want to know that you will go back. So the shorter the time you say, the better for you. Because they know like she wants to be there for just only a month because she has something to come back to to do. Another thing that goes with the length of stay, like if you're booking like, you know, vacation and stuff like that, you already have tickets. Just make sure if you're coming here on a visitor's visa as an FYI, make sure it's a return ticket don't or never almost never book a one-way ticket on a visitor's visa that is a no-no because at the point of entry they might deny you entry you might be sent back home because if you're booking a one-way ticket it shows that you're not planning on going back so usually we advise people like if you're coming on a visitor's visa Make sure you book a return ticket because it shows you invested this money to pay for a ticket because you are guaranteed you're sure you're coming back home. Not just one person with one way ticket and then they end up here, they don't have money to book a return ticket. And then like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure like you're truthful, you're telling the truth when you go into these interviews because they already have that information. So for a question like if they ask you, have you traveled to the United States before? Like this question, don't even lie. Do not lie. Because they have the records. US is not like Kenya where you can alter the records, like the records can go missing. No, the records are electronic. So when somebody pulls up your profile, it says when you stepped in the United States or if you don't, you never stepped in the United States and how long you stayed here. So if you violated your visa or whatever, it's all going to be on the computer. So to be truthful, to be credible, to get a visa, make sure you tell the truth. If you've ever been to the United States, whether it was 30 years ago, 50 years ago, you have to say yes, because they know. They will find out. They'll look at the records and they will see that you visited the United States. So there's no point of lying. If they say, have you been in the United States? You're like, yes, I was in the United States. And you can give the dates that you were here. And if you violated your visa, they already know you violated your visa and you overstayed your visa. They'll be like, why did you overstay this visa? Or what happened here and here? So make sure when they ask you a question, especially the questions that you know they have, they already have the answers to, do not attempt to lie. You'd rather tell the truth and explain why it happened versus you lying because that's ground for like visa denial and if you like the content of my videos please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to share because when you like a video it gets recommended to other users on youtube so other people will actually see it and learn the same information you're learning your friend can also learn it because you liked it so if you liked it get pushed to other users on youtube so it's important you like this video you share and also if you've not subscribed Please subscribe but if you've already subscribed guys welcome to the community now let's talk about something else let's talk about the family ties so family ties is something like you know it's a proof that or a reason that you will go back home what is that thing that will push you to go back home that family ties so what will push you to return back home so that's the family ties you're talking about and if you're from Africa or any other country having kids in Africa is not family ties it is family ties but then they know Africans are very good at abandoning their kids Africans will just come here they make good life and then they go get their kids they know that so having kids just having kids is not evidence uh of family ties it is but it's not you know you know what i mean so what is family ties what can you use as family ties first if you're married if you're married 
that's good grounds for family ties because they know when you come here to adjust your status like if you have to get married to somebody here you have to go through the process of divorce and all that stuff so they know it's a lot of work so that's why having you know a wife or a spouse or a husband is a stronger family tie than just having children because they know with children you can come get get a green card and go back and get your kids but then with the husband is not the same way or the wife is not the same way you have to go through the divorce process so that's why having or being married that is a strong family tie because they know you have to go back to your husband you have to go back so they know that you know having a wife having a husband is a really strong tie that will you know compel you to go back home or you have to go through like stressful a uh, situation where you have to file for divorce and all that and that's a lot of work so that works as a family tie but kids it does but you know it's not a very uh, strong family tie because you know africans are very good at abandoning their kids number two you can use your job as a family tie why because some people have very good job like if you're a minister of foreign uh, affairs you're like you know you work in the ministry or you're a deputy president or you have like you know a good job you work with an NGO they know you're not gonna abandon that job that pays you well to come and wash dishes in a restaurant right so having a good job is a very strong family tie because they know you're not leaving a good job to come here and do dishes clean people like you know do this menial jobs because they know you have a good job so you can use that as a family tie to show that you'll go back home because you have a job to return to and in this case you know you have like you know either a letter from your uh, employer who's saying like you know you're on vacation for two weeks or a month and you know they're giving you a month to go do whatever you need to do and come back so that you can have like a letter from your employer to show that you have a very good job that you can return to another thing maybe you have like you know um for example like in america uh, if you work for the state in new york so you work for the state you just retire uh you know after 20 years and then like that if that situation were to be in africa and then you worked for 19 years so if you work for the 19 years if you don't hit the 20 you don't get the good pension so you have to finish the 20 year so if you're applying for the visitor's visa and you're on the 19th year, you can say, yes, if I don't come back to return to my job, I can't get my pension because I have to be 20 years in to get the good pension. So they know the pension will bring you back home. You will return because you want to go back to work for the year to get your pension. So that way you can use that as a family tie another thing that you can use as a family tie is like if you have land property back home you can use like you can use that as a family tie and you know it has to be like something is not like okay I just took like a mortgage from a bank and I paid only one month and then now I'm using that as evidence of a proof of property now because they can repossess it like you don't own it really like you just like took a mortgage out so literally like if you lose it you don't have anything to lose right but if you have like a mortgage that you paid like you know almost you're almost done with paying the mortgage or something like that and you know you'll own it eventually you can use that as property or you can use land or you can use um you know you have um you know this land you're living there with your parents you're living with your kids you know you have uh, people to go back to so you can use your land on property and you know your parents back home that need care they're sick and you know you have proof that you know you're the caregiver and stuff like that and you have to go and come back because you know you run the family so they'll they'll know that you know what as much as you're coming here you have something to return to uh, you can use that as proof of family ties and also like if you're coming on vacation you know you surely know your bank statement it has a lot of money because to come here on vacation you have to be really loaded so your bank statement has like money it's not about like you're broke and then you're booking a trip abroad you know but if you show like you know proof of finances like you know i'm booking this trip because i can afford it not because i had to sell land 
to actually go to Disney World, you know. Another family tie, like for example, you're a minister for a church. Maybe you have a big church, like all these churches that we know, you know. You're like uh, Alan Kuna or somebody like that, right? You have a known church. Everybody sees you. They know like that's your church. And then you're getting a visa to come here. They know you're not going to stay because who's going to be taking care of your church? You can't leave your church under somebody else's guidance because you have to stay here and wash dishes, right? So they know like if you have a church, you have a congregation to go back to. You have this leadership that you have to go back to. You're not going to stay here. Same with the politicians. They know they won the election. They're going to get in there. They're corrupt. They're going to embezzle all, those, all that money. They're going to get rich. They're going to like steal all that money from the public. Why would you stay here and wash dishes when you can literally be corrupt over there and making that much money, you know, which is not good. But I don't advocate for that. But then they look at it that you can get richer over there quicker versus staying here and starting to wash dishes. It doesn't make sense. So if you're a politician, it's very also easy to get a visitor's visa and like i'm saying like you know whatever you know i'm saying in this video is just like experience it differs like somebody literally can go to the embassy with nothing with no proof with nothing and they still get a visa somebody will go there and even say they're coming here to watch kids and they'll still get a visa so it just depends like whatever i'm saying here is not like a it's like, a, you know, um, hard on stone or something like that. Like it varies. Some people will go and get it, but then some people won't. And also remember, like whatever I said about family ties and whatever, if I'm talking about marriage, just know that you'll, you might be required to provide proof of the marriage. So you'll need a marriage certificate or stuff like that. If you have property, they might ask you for the deed or whatever, just to provide proof. If you're claiming like, you know, you're employed, you're getting good money, they might need, you know, um, pay stubs, they might need like, you know, a letter from your employer. So just know that whatever you answer, you can back it up. Like whatever you provide evidence, like, okay, I have a church, you can provide evidence. It's just like the green card. Do you have proof? If you do not have proof, don't even mention it. Because now if they ask you for proof and you don't have it, then that's ground for like visa denial. So just make sure like whatever you answer, whatever evidence you use, you have proof to back it up. And also it's important, like, you know, uh, just tell the truth, guys. Like, you know, uh, I know a lot of people will try to lie to see if, you know, they can get a visa or whatever. Sometimes it's just like, you know, being honest, you don't have to remember anything about it. Um, so just be, you know, truthful. If they ask you for something, don't try to lie. Like if they ask you if you've been in the U.S., you say no. They have the I-94 records. They have a history of that. So even if you lie, they'll just find out. So just make sure, you know, tell the truth. Be open-minded. Go there. You're confident. Don't just go there like, you know, you're so intimidated that you can't even answer the question correctly. You're shaking and stuff like that. So nervous. Um, just be confident. Maintain good um, eye contact and be just like, you know what, I'm going to visit, you know, like just be there. Like oh, I'm doing you a favor. I'm going to your country as a tourist, you know, so just be like, you know, confident about it. And I just realized, you know what, like if I say everything, this video will be mad, mad, mad long. So, um, I don't want that to happen. Otherwise you'll be watching me for like an hour. I don't want that. I know you have stuff to do. So, what I'm gonna do this video I'm just gonna end it here and what I'm gonna do like you know if you have any questions you can type the questions in the comment section and then I'll see like you know I'm not an immigration lawyer so if you're watching this just know that I'm not an immigration lawyer whatever I'm saying here is experience based only so you need to contact an immigration lawyer uh, if you have any questions about what you need to do or before you apply for this visa because you're listening to somebody on YouTube you might want to check with an immigration lawyer. So if you type questions, whatever question I can answer, I will try to do a video just like the way I did with the green card. Like I will just try to do a video answering the questions that have been asked because that way, you know, sometimes I give information. I don't know what people want. So like, you know, if you have questions that you think I haven't addressed this in this video, or maybe uh, you need clarification. If I can, I would because you know, I'm not an immigration lawyer, so I'm doing it out of experience. So there's some stuff that I actually completely don't have an idea how it is. I just, you know, I applied for people. 
uh, they got a visa they went to the interview i guided them uh you know and they got the visa but that's about it i don't have like any expertise or anything like that it's just out of experience so if you have any questions type a question here maybe there's a lawyer who's going to be watching this video and they can answer the question or if i get a chance and i know the answer i'll do a video responding to all those questions i know i was supposed to do a video about the ds160 but then i felt like you know doing the interview questions first i think uh, is more uh, beneficial because when you you answer your ds160 because it goes directly to them you know what to put in there like you know you have to be truthful you know like how to read the questions because these questions will might be asked at the interview again so that's why i decided to do a video about the interview but then the next time then i will do a video about how to complete a ds160 and ds160 is, go, is pretty much a uh, specific individualized base Literally, whatever I answer on my DS-160 might be different from whatever you answer on your DS-160. But then, you know, the general idea is just tell the truth and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it's not a very hard form uh, to complete. And also, I have like, you know, uh, some interviews, great interviews lined up uh, with people that I'll be, uh, you know, uploading on my channel. So pretty, pretty much, um, you know, watch if you want to learn. Uh, a lot of stuff you better watch those those interviews they're going to be very helpful like I'll, I'll interview somebody who you know got a b1 b2 visa and then you know um that way you have an idea like you know from somebody who actually went through the process uh so i'll be uploading videos like that keep an eye uh, on those videos um i know i have been so so busy and i really apologize people have been asking me like you know where are the videos we want videos we want videos um but really like, you know, I'm so busy. I'll try to do a video at least each week. And then maybe next year, uh, I'll be more available to do more videos so that, you know, I'm making sure like, you know, people are learning whatever I need, they need to learn or whatever I learned from my experience, I can transfer to other people. And before I forget, I have a Swahili channel. Like a Swahili channel is called uh, Mluya USA. It's, I'm gonna put a link down below and pin in the comment so if you speak swahili that's pretty much is going to be swahili because i realize like you know a lot of people here some people don't speak english so if i do an interview um on this channel in swahili some people are complaining that you know because my followers are from everywhere the united states kenya ghana whatever south africa so i have followers from everywhere and some of them don't speak swahili that's why i decided to start another channel that's focused on basic on Swahili so anybody who doesn't understand English like they can also get the same information that's here they can learn on that channel so if you haven't subscribed go subscribe support your girl so people from like Swahili speaking countries I don't speak French so I cannot like you know do a video in French but they speak Swahili in some of these countries and I speak Swahili so as much as my Swahili is not a hundred percent perfect perfect like the Tanzanian Swahili but at least we're understanding each other. So if you want to learn about green card, about visitor's visa, I'll try to do both videos here and over there in my Swahili channel. So remember, it's called Luya USA. I'm going to put a link on the comment section. Please go there and subscribe. And that's it today. So let's meet next time uh, on an educational packed video again. Um, see you in my next video for right now. Thanks for watching.